Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 16.2 beta 4 to developers. This is available now and hopefully soon to public beta testers with iOS 16.2 public beta 4. Now this came in at a fairly small 640.9 megabytes that's on my 14 pro max. And it was about the same size on all the devices here. Along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 16.2 beta 4, watch OS 9.2 beta 4, Mac OS 13.1 beta 4, TV OS 16.2 beta 4, and HomePod OS 16.2 beta 4. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. If we tap on the version number, you can see the build number, iOS 16.2, 20C, 5058D. And the first change has to do with this page here where it now says this beta version of iOS 16.2 contains bug fixes and improvements for more information. And it gives you a URL. If you follow this, it just brings you to the developer website. And it also says this beta version of iOS should only be deployed on devices dedicated for iOS 16.2. The other thing to mention is the rapid security response 16.2 B is not here. It might be included maybe within this update, but it's not a separate update that's right here. And there is a modem update in this update. So with the 14 pro max and 14 pro, I saw a modem update. You may not have it on all your devices here. Now, as far as new features, changes, and updates, there's a few small ones that we can visually see. The first one has to do with the actual notifications, the scroll in the overall animation is a little bit different depending on what you have going on here. So if I turn off, do not disturb, let's press and hold. We'll turn that off changes to a different wallpaper. You can see as we move up, it actually scrolls a little bit different and it's super buggy right now. Now, also, if you have music playing and you swipe home to the dynamic Island, the outline isn't as prominent and sometimes barely shows up. So I think you can see that if I tilt the phone, but if you have a black background at the top, the line is a little less prominent prominent than it was before. Now there's a couple small changes within settings and then accessibility under accessibility under Apple watch mirroring and control nearby devices. There's all new icons. So if we take a look on beta three or beta two, either of them, they're a little bit different. And you'll see here where it says control nearby devices. The icon is all new. Also Apple watch mirroring. If you have an Apple watch paired to that device. Now, yesterday Apple released iOS 16.1.2 and it had some fixes for connectivity with different mobile networks or different network providers. I'm not sure if that's in this update. We did have that modem update, but we didn't have a modem update yesterday with the public release. So we don't really know if that's resolved in this one. However, I would expect those changes to be here and we'll know over the next few days. Also, Apple announced today that iOS users can now share car keys with Android users, starting with Google pixel devices. It's not specific to the beta, but you'll be able to use that in your Apple wallet. If you have a car key and share that key with Google pixel users. So that's a great update and really nice. If someone else has a different phone than you. Now also there's a change in TV. Now TV has live activities and we have those settings down in our TV app where we have live activities. If you have these enabled, you'll be able to see those. And if we go into the TV app and maybe we follow a recent game, you'll see follow and live now. And if we go into the same thing, on the 13 pro that we actually have the previous beta on, you'll see here, the buttons are a little bit different. They're smaller. Now this seems to vary from device to device. It's not a major change, but something that's a little bit different as you can see here. Additionally, there's a bunch of different code wording changes throughout, and there's even a new font called SF cash for Apple pay later. So Apple pay later framework seems to be here with an all new font with SF cash and also some ch wording changes throughout the whole OS. I also expect major updates to accessibility as we saw from nine to five Mac, where we saw a bunch of different updates where maybe we'll be able to customize the home screen to make it easier to press different buttons. We haven't seen that yet though, in this update. Also the other day, Apple released Apple music replay. And you can see that here where it says replay 2022. Let's go back here and you can go to that site. Once you go to the site, you can get started and it gives information about that. So if you use Apple music, be sure to check this out. It shows how many hours you listen to music, what your top music was top album, top, top song, and much more. It's a really nice addition with an all new interface this year. Now, as far as bugs in this update, well, the lag scrolling seems to be fixed. So anyone that had lag, whether that's on a promotion device or not, that seems to be resolved. 
Also, so far, the swipe home stutter bug is fixed. However, that seems to take a few days to sort of come back. And then you have to reboot your device to fix it, and it doesn't always fix it, but it does seem that that's fixed. Also, there was a bug yesterday with YouTube. So there was a YouTube bug fix that they fixed themselves. It didn't have anything to do with the update of iOS 16.1.2. It was specific to YouTube. However, one bug still seems to remain, the rotation bug. So if I play my video from yesterday, we rotate, it sort of just jumps. You can see that there. Some people say this is fixed on iPad or other different applications. I don't see it fixed. So that's something that still needs to be updated. It probably just needs to be resolved from YouTube though, with an update to their app. Now, additionally, let's take a look at the release notes. So if we go into the feedback app under the iOS 16.2 beta four release notes, there's one resolved issue that's mentioned. It says while using stage manager with an external display, dragging a second window to the workspace incorrectly hides the recent app list, shifting all windows in the workspace to the right. This has been fixed. They don't mention anything else, whether they fixed anything else or there's still remaining bugs. The good thing is there's no remaining bugs for beta four that are listed. It's pretty rare that we see that. So maybe they've resolved a lot of different issues. So far, overall performance seems to be pretty good. Just using it for the past hour or so though. So it's nice and smooth with scrolling and older phones. I have it on the iPhone 11 here as well. It's not too old, but if we go into music, you'll see it loaded very quickly. I haven't opened music in quite some time and it seems to scroll nice and fast. No issues there going back and forth, going into different apps, whether that be Apple books, see how quickly that loads. It's nice and fast. It seems to be very fast this time around. I noticed it seems to be a little bit quicker than it was before. So that's a great sign. As far as the overall heat of the device, it is a little bit warm here, but nothing excessive. I know quite a few people are concerned with that. It doesn't seem to bother me too much as it doesn't get so hot that it's untouchable. The OS seems to handle that. And let me show you briefly with the thermal camera. And here you can see with the FLIR thermal camera, it's under 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty great. And for those of you that wanted Celsius, let me flip this around just so you can see this and switch to Celsius under settings. And here you can see Celsius it's under 28 degrees Celsius. So 27.9 to 28. So that's pretty good. It's staying nice and cool. Now, as far as overall battery life, that will take a few days to measure. We normally talk about that on the weekend, but my battery life so far on beta three, wasn't that great. In fact, it hasn't been great for a while and my overall battery health is 100%. But if we take a look at the last 10 days, yesterday we had two hours and 15 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 42 minutes of screen off time and used about 50% of the battery. Today I've used more than that three hours and 45 minutes and we're under 50%. So even in that time, since installing this update, it looks like it may have already improved, but it will take a few days to measure that for sure. So I'll be sure to let you know a little bit later. As far as if you should install iOS 16.2 beta four, well, if you're on the betas, absolutely install it. Make sure you're providing feedback and seeing how it is for everyone else. Hopefully as we get closer and closer to a final release, this becomes more and more stable. So definitely install it. If you're on iOS 16.1.2 or earlier, I probably would just wait for the public release as that should be soon. So I would expect next week we'll probably have iOS 16.2 RC or release candidate. That's what we had last year with a final release, probably on the 12th or so last year, we had it on the 13th and they seem to be following the exact days we had last time around. So probably on the 12th, we could see the final release and then we won't see iOS 16.3 betas typically until January. That of course could change, but if they're following what they've done over the past couple of years, that's what we can expect. So just a couple weeks away for iOS 16.2 and we'll see all of those different features. There's over 20, 20 different changes, maybe even more than that. Now, as far as benchmarks, I did run those quickly just for those that were interested. And you'll see, I scored 1,881 for single core, 5,305 for multi-core. If we take a look at the previous week, you'll see that it's actually a little bit higher for single core and a little bit lower for multi-core. It's not so big of a difference that it really should make any difference. It seems to be performing as you would expect. And I'm seeing the same thing across all these devices. And so that's everything so far with iOS 16.2 beta four. If I find anything else, of course, I'll be sure to do a follow up with different features and more. If you've found anything else though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.